All right, so um, our first and only review of the day is going to be for the film Equalizer 3. Equalizer 3 um, is, of course, the third Equalizer film starring Denzel Washington. Um, here he's returning as Robert McCall, um, and this time he's got a new mission, um, a new mission that kind of left him gravely injured. So the movie opens up with him in Sicily. He's doing a job, um, as he always does, helping people. Um, gets gravely injured uh, while he's, you know, kind of going, away, you know, trying to, you know, treat his wounds. He ends up passing out. He gets found by a policeman, gets taken to a nearby uh, Italian town, gets taken to the doctor there. He patches him up. And while he's kind of recovering from his injuries, you know, he kind of, you know, spends a lot of time in this town and kind of bonds with it. You know, he's like, mm -hmm. hey, maybe this is where I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be at peace. You know, I can finally be at peace here and live out the rest of my days. Um, but as always, uh, there's always those evil elements that kind of come back and force him to just fuck people up. I mean, it just he just mm -hmm. he can't help it. You know, there's always bad people around and his job to get involved, even though he's he's, you know, looking and trying to go like, I don't want to get involved. I'm trying to let us run its course. But of course, he has to get involved in the people that are making these uh, making his life worse and making the lives of these people in this town worse is a mafia called the Camorre. I believe it was called. It was yeah, called, it's the, the uh, it's one of the biggest Italian uh, mafias. Also, oh, it's a real. Mafia. Oh, yeah. No, this that's legit. Oh, uh, OK. Yeah, they're uh, the Camorra are a huge uh, mafia, one of the oldest and largest criminals going back to the 17th century. Wow. Okay. That's where the Italian mob in America comes from. Mm. all their standards come back from the Komoda, like the whole capo meaning boss and, and, and all that stuff. Yeah. They come from, uh, that area. Mm. Okay. So the Kimura, um, yeah. there who Kimura. runs this town, they're getting protection money, uh, from the shop owners. Um, you know, they're killing, you know, uh, old people, uh, you know, doing all, you know, really putting their thumb, um, on this town. And of course, Denzel Washington has to get involved and has to save this town. Um, so that's kind of, yeah, the basic kind of setup of this new equalizer film. Um, I would say with this equalizer film, I don't know about you, if you've seen the other two, but this seems a lot more violent than mm. the other, uh, equalizer films have been. Um, I mean, of course we saw, you know, him kill people in the other ones, but here you see like he's killing people and he like shoves a gun through a dude's eye. Oh shooting, yeah. That was great. You know, he's shooting the gun out of the guy's head and, um, there's a scene where he breaks the dude's arm and then the bone pops out. Um, so he's kind of doing all types of different stuff here that it just seems a little, a lot of violence and it seems a lot more visceral, um, and a lot more harsh and, and brutal than we've kind of, I think I've seen in the other two movies, mm -hmm. um, thinking about it. Um, yeah. And of course, Denzel Washington, you know, even though this, I mean, he, I mean he's not doing a whole lot of range here with his no. acting ability. I mean, we've seen much, obviously, much, much better for him. Um, but still, I mean, I, I think with this character in this third movie, it's more about trying to find peace for the character, you know, him kind of reflecting on things and all the violence that he's caused in his life. Yeah. Um, and he's like, hey, you know, and, and I think it's, so it's a different kind of dimension than we've seen with the character. Um, and, and I think previous stuff, and I don't know about you, but mm -hmm. with these other movies and he's dealt with some bad people before, like in the first movie, it was oh, yeah. like drug trafficking. Mob. Yeah. You know, they were, you know, Russian mob, drug traffickers, pimps, uh, things like that. Then in the second movie, um, corrupt, you know, government agents that he was dealing with people that from his past private military. Uh, yeah. Private military. Uh, and then here with these kind of mafia guys, I don't know. I feel like I really wanted to see him fuck these people up. I think mm -hmm. out of all the villains of these movies, it's like I felt like I really, really wanted to see him fuck these people up more than anybody. Yeah. Um, and because like this, I mean, you just see kind of the stuff they're doing to this town and and a lot of crazy stuff. Like there's one scene where I believe they're trying to like force this this uh, couple out of their home, trying to get yeah. them to sell their property. And then they see this old man who's living in their home, and he, he I, he's not even paying attention. He's he's just doing his own thing. He's looking out the window, and all of a sudden, next scene cuts. They they throw him out the window and hang him. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you know, with his chair and all. And it's like, God damn, you know. So yeah, I mean, at all, you know, at all this time, it's like, yeah, I really want to see him kind of get these people and 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 kill them. Um, but I'll pass on Dusk here. Dusk, what was some of your thoughts about Equalizer Three? 
Uh, yeah. In preparation for this, I rewatched the first two movies. Uh, I think a lot of the visceralness from this one leans much more to the first movie. The first movie had a, a lot of early on, had a lot of uh, that we don't really see a lot of the violence and we just see the implications of it until when it really matters. The one office scene when he's with the, uh, the mob guy and uh, he goes ham and uh, yeah, but and the second one, I didn't like as much as the first, I think it lost a lot of its uh, momentum and we didn't get to explore too much about uh, McCall as a character in the second one, even though they kind of tried. I think that's the big, his biggest failure is I didn't really feel much for him and, Versus the villain, uh, even though he uh, caused a lot of pain for him in the second one, I, I thought that was a little uh, bit of a fumble. But with this one, yeah, you're right. The visceral nature is really increased. Like right from the get go, you see him uh, doing just horrendous uh, things to people. And not that they don't deserve it. These are all bad, uh, bad people. Although I, I do think early on they do set an interesting precedent of, well, what's going to happen with the next generation? What's going to happen when after all that's said and done? Because uh, just with uh, all the chaos and all the things that happen within the dynamic of him committing all these different murders, uh, he even has a couple flashback moments where he really ponders and thinks about it. And you see from his point of view of all the, the violence and all the killing he's done. And uh, it does weigh on him. And he does consider, like, I've lived a pretty violent life for many, many years. And uh, as much as I've helped people, I've also kind of continued that cycle of violence. And that's why I do think it it works earlier on where you, you like uh, like the characters, start to really kind of like this small town, this smaller town. I like to kind of like the characters who are friendly and helpful and just trying to live their lives. And the, this uh, organization comes in, they try to hassle them out of home, try to take over, try to corrupt it. And at first, he he's he doesn't want to be part of it. He just let the police handle it, let the other authorities handle it. And when they just keep pushing, he he finally snaps and uh, he goes back into action. And I think when that happens, it does get uh, almost to a numbing level of violence, where it's just so is it like so to the point where like oh yep he's just he's going in all right. Uh, but I think it works for the most part. Mm. yeah yeah um and yeah like i said compared to the kind of other movies the violence is kind of up there as, as you said and and i said as well um it's kind of different um and also with these other movies you know they they follow kind of you know kind of a similar pattern mm -hmm. uh like this one does of like he always takes some somebody under his wing like in the first movie it was chloe grace moretz like that's the inciting thing that kind of even gets him out of retirement in the first place and mm -hmm. then, you know he kind of feels like i gotta do something um in the second movie it was the actor, I'm blanking on his name, but he was the guy from Moonlight. Um, he also was Bobby Brown in the Whitney Houston movie. Right. Um, and he takes that kind of kid under his wing and kind of is like, I got to, you know, he finds a special interest there with him. Here, it's like he takes this entire town kind of, you know, under his kind of protection and wing here mm -hmm. of like, because, you know, in they do spend a lot of time with this. And I want to know, like, you know, because you watched them very, very recently, the the, the two equalizer yeah. movies. Like it feels like this one, it it's not as action heavy as maybe the other two were. Like, you know, the, the scenes of action aren't, you know, uh, as maybe you're gonna you're gonna experience some long breaks between action um in this third one compared to, to the the first and second one um here. Cause it's a lot of time of him like recovering from his injuries, spending time oh, yeah. with the people in this town getting closer to them, getting to know them. Eventually, you know, he gets, you know, integrated as becoming one of them, um, which is kind of sweet. So, you know, a lot of it is obviously it's pretty corny. Yeah. A lot of the stuff of it is pretty, you know, cliche, pretty corny there. But um, what, what do you think about that? Yeah, I think in comparison, the first one, uh, I think the, the reason the first one was the hit that it was and well liked is, is well, Denzel uh, came in. He, he had a little bit more, uh, effort into that role as well even though he's playing denzel and he's playing laid back i think it worked just for the visual nature of it kind of like a taken like movie but it, it you did want to see the bad guys punished and it worked on that level uh with the second one even i don't think even though pedro pascal tried his best with the character as is written i just didn't feel that level of even though he was being a, an awful person you're just going 
yeah, but your excuse for why you're doing what you're doing doesn't make much sense. And it, it, it try it didn't quite cover what uh, what I what really needed to be there in order to fully justify the action sequences that later that came later. I think with this one, you spend such a bit of time with him with not being able to fight, recovering, just taking his time, relaxing that. Yeah, you, you kind of start to f like the city and like the people. And even though it's a bit cliched, it is nice to see that he he just get welcomed so easily into this community and he just starts to enjoy for the first time in a long time a level of relaxation and retirement. And so that when that element of evil comes back in, he's just like, all right, the city's under my protection. Let, let's do this. Where beforehand, it was always like an individual. And this one, it kind of takes a, a bigger a swath of people. Yeah. And I think that actually kind of helps. I think another reason why this movie might be more violent than the other ones previously is the movies that came in between. Since the second, mo six, second movie, which came out in 2018, we've had a couple of John Wick movies that's come mm -hmm. by. And I would say those are a, if you're looking for the echelon of action movies, there's the uh, Liam Neeson with Taken. There's the John Wick movies. And then Equalizer was kind of one of those hopping on the train of Taken. And then John Wick just kind of came in and blew them out of the water. Yeah. When it comes to just pure action. So it was kind of nice having a, uh, at least from that as aspect of just having a, a setting and a place that I kind of liked and kind of characters I kind of, we're starting to get familiar with before uh, action kind of came into tow. Because aside from that first action moment, it's really just seeing the chaos brought in by these people. And then it gets, and that really the next action scene doesn't happen until about 40, I'm going to say 45 ish minutes into the movie afterwards. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, they do a little bit of also, you know, with that little bit different tricks. Mm -hmm. um and here oh, yeah. um you know before we saw in the other ones it was kind of the whole slow motion type thing where you know he kind of you know there's a washington this he's got a, he's got a superpower he can freeze yeah, time. Yeah. he can he can he can go like the flash he can you know you know see things kind of slow motion here they kind of don't do that here they do more of like one scene you see like it's denzel vision where mm -hmm. you see where he's going pov where he goes and kills a bunch of people which i thought was <laughs> i thought that was kind of fun um and you know, for an action series that has an actor in it that, you know, Denzel is 60 plus years old. He's almost yeah. 70. So yeah. they do work around the fact that, I mean, obviously this guy isn't, you know, some young buck here. Mm -hmm. And he like a lot of times stalks his prey, you know, plans his opportunities, really plans it out. Um, you know, uses a different variety of weapons, um, you know, uses stealth, everything like that. So it, it kind of. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's still kind of crazy, obviously, that oh, yeah. one guy can kill this, but it, it, look, it makes it a little bit more maybe realistic a little bit that, you know, you can see how he is taking out these guys and in, in, in that way, because he's just picking them off one by one by one. You know, he's not going into a room and, mm -hmm. you know, killing all of them there. He's he's picking them off, you know, slowly one by one. So it, it's 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 a little bit more kind of, you know, good work around for a guy of, you know, Denzel Washington's age, you know. Yeah. Uh, all our action stars are old as hell. You know, Liam Neeson yeah. is 60 plus. Uh, oh, yeah. Keanu Reeves is almost in his 60s. Mm -hmm. Tom Cruise is in his 60s. Yeah. You know, all these guys are old as hell, you know, and, yeah. and, and all doing this. So it's that. I, yeah. I I think that uh, I think what also made him um, a bit different. It, this was kind of I don't know if whether or not this was taken from the original uh, television series from the 80s, but uh which I don't know if you know this, this, this whole franchise was a reinterpretation of an 80 series. Yep. But, mm -hmm. uh, same character name and everything. I think what worked for it was in that first movie and then extended was that whole timing feature was the fact that he put everything to a rhythmic timing and he could calculate the amount of steps that it required. And then this, you kind of see it more in action, I think was a benefit, but yeah, man, even in the first, even first movie, he was put, he was in the late fifties when he was doing yeah. that. So now he's in his like late 60s, 68. So, yeah, 68. So yeah, he's uh, I, I like that dynamic where he takes even in the first one, he takes his time. He thinks it all out and he's waiting on people to make mistakes and then he pounces on them. And I think mm -hmm. that is what's made it work. It's similar to kind of what uh, Liam Neeson did with Taken, where he was 
also, even though he was very, uh, he rushed in, he did a lot of things. He was very procedurally based. You could tell just from the way he's mo he moved or at least from it, he had experience with going in, breaking in, doing what he had to do. And, uh, I mean, then in the John Wick's stuff, he just kind of blows them out of the water. But yeah, I think for the, uh, this is this kind of movie, I think it, it works fine enough. I was never super blown away by some of the major action scenes, but I was impressed the tricks used, uh, covering up a, uh, a 68 Denzel. And even though, yes, it's, it's completely ridiculous by this point that he would be able to take on that many people and keep on trucking. Mm -hmm. Uh, you kind of like the movie. You just kind of go, eh, whatever. It's a movie. Yeah, yeah. You just kind of go then. And um, also Dakota Fanning. Um, yeah. She's in this. Um, a Man on Fire reunion uh, here. Um, and they, you know, they work well together. Uh, you know, kind of get some good chemistry together here. Um, she's a she plays a CIA agent that he contacts mm -hmm. uh, because he when he went to Sicily he had like a lead on a on a job there that he was doing. Um, he wanted to pass on that information again, you know, being the helpful citizen that he is. Um, mm -hmm. How'd you like her in the movie? I thought she's fine. Honestly, not enough of her, her character, but I think their dynamic is fine enough. I am surprised how they, tr how they wrapped it around mm -hmm. to trying to do full circle with that character and going, I was like, Oh, most people aren't even going to remember those characters from the first movie <laughs> to even have a, I had to look it up kind of later. I'm going like, oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's I'm glad you guys remember it because I didn't. But that's that's kind of a nice little uh, Easter egg or bonus, I should say. But I yeah. think they, they work well. They work well enough. I think for what she was given, she still has a pretty good job. Uh, Denzel, honestly, even from the first movie, he was just he was just being Denzel. Not a lot of range for this character, just kind of being stoic and walking around and acting all cool. Um, yeah. Not a lot of range with this character, unfortunately. And uh, that still continues kind of here. But I, I did enjoy his seeing him smile more and kind of look looking like he was enjoying himself in the earlier parts of the movie. And yeah. uh, that that was kind of nice to see where it's like, oh, OK, he can smile. He does have moments where he, he he's trying to relax and trying to just be a regular person. Yeah. <laughs> Because yeah, he can go with, he could be the whole smiling, charming, you know, making jokes, you know, friendly with people, Denzel and this. And then all of a sudden, you know, he gets that mode where he gets serious and he just starts, you know what I mean? Killing people. And you believe yeah. it, you know, you oh, believe yeah. that flip for sure, you know, when he, when he does that, uh, which is, which is really good, you know? Um, so yeah, um, which is what you want to, you know, from an action movie is an action star is you want to believe like this person can really, you know, do the things that they're doing in it. And I, you know, so yeah, I mean, he's got a good acting performance enough here that it's like, yeah, I can totally believe that. Um, so to wrap up, um, and give a rating for this, um, if you've seen the other Equalizer movies, I would say this is about on kind of the same kind of quality as the other yeah. ones. If you would kind of like those, um, I would say with this one, it's not maybe as heavily action filled as the other ones were. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit more trying to be a little bit more of a character stuff with, the, you know, with Robert McCall here and a little mm -hmm. bit of that. And maybe a bit slower paced than you've seen from the other ones. Uh, it did feel, I think, because of that a lot longer than it is. Um, because of so much time that's spent with him just recovering and him in this little town and spending with these people and everything, like it just, I think it just kind of feels way longer than it, what it is. Mm -hmm. Um, that's only really my big negative here, but um, still fun to watch him, you know, take out bad guys, you know, kill people here. And if you're into that big violent stuff, there, um, that's definitely here for you. Like I said, he messes a lot of people up really bad, oh, yeah. um, for sure. Uh, so yeah, yeah, for me, I would give it a I think it's a high stream it to me. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Yeah. High stream it. What about you, Des? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say this. I like this one better than the second one. Uh, I think it does redeem itself a bit more having it be a bit more of a character stu study versus the second one where that's what I wanted more of and I didn't really get. So this one feels like in a weird way, it feels like a more natural sequel than the, than the sequel was. And if this is going to be the final movie in the franchise, uh, instead of being in a, I guess, a seaside local uh, villa like he was going to be in the first one, he he's kind of in that, but now in Italy. And if this is going to be the last movie of uh, with Denzel and Co., I think that's a, a fine enough way to wrap it up.
all things considered. So, yeah, I think I'll also go with a... Uh, I think this is a, a solid stream. It. I think if you go in and uh, and you already like the other Equalizer movies, I think you'll enjoy this one well enough. And you might even like this one like I did more than the second one. So about on par with the first, or at least close enough, despite its faults, that I could recommend it as a, a good stream it. Yeah. Yeah, I would say it's about on level on the first one, maybe a little bit above yeah. it. Maybe. A little maybe. Bit. Um, but yeah, I think it maintains a consistent quality through these movies. And and yeah, I mean, they're not on the level of like something like the John Wick movie. Oh, yeah. Um, they're better than the Taken movies, I would say. The first uh, one is still really good. Yeah, the first Taken is pretty good. The sec um, It's the second and third that they drop off. Each yeah. one drops off harder than the last. Yeah. So... Yeah, so I, I would say, yeah, I mean, as a consistent quality of a franchise, it equalizes better than Taken. The first yeah. movie, I think, of Taken hits harder, but yeah, as a consistent, just consistency of quality, I think Equalizer movies. Yeah, I think so. Equalizer quality wise over three movies is better than one really good movie and two pretty poor, and by the third one, really terrible sequels. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, that was our review for Equalizer 3, two streamings. Mm -hmm. uh, for it.